We all love bees. And as gardeners, seeing them flit from one plant to another, pollinating our crops, interacting with our herbaceous borders, or just flying around generally, the sound of a bumblebee tells you that it's summer. Now these are my hives at the bottom of the garden. We've had them here for about a decade, and these lovely bees produce honey for myself and my family. But if you want to help bees in your garden, you don't have to have hives because there are many other different types. In fact, there are over 250 different species of bee in our gardens. And, you know, bees have been about on this planet for a long time. In fact, the oldest recorded bee was found in Myanmar, 100 million years old. Can you believe it? So other than honeybees, the natural bees that visit your garden are in different categories too. You've got bumblebees, you've got masonry bees, and you've also got minor bees. There are 24 species of bumblebee in the UK, and they're sociable bugs that nest in colonies. Now there can just be a few dozen bees or several hundred buzzing creatures. Masonry bees can be found buzzing around brick walls. They are a solitary species that nest in cavities of walls, wood and hollow stems. Mining bees live underground. Now if you've spotted a hole in your garden lawn that's near a small mound of earth, chances are it's down to a mining bee. Now adding bee-friendly plants into your garden is so easy. Very inexpensive and of course once they're in the ground they just grow bigger and better. And it's not just for the bees, it's for you too. Because some of the best flowering varieties are also great for bees as well. So both of us have a tendency to enjoy it. And for me, I don't only enjoy coming and seeing the plants in flower, I enjoy seeing the bees visit them as well. So let me just take you through a few of my favourites that you may wish to embellish your own garden with to help the population of bees that pop into your backyard. Now, foxgloves are a big favourite. Now, of course, there are the wild foxgloves that come about, but there are also some cultivated varieties as well. Now, this one is called Pink Panther, and it's a marvellous one. It's a perennial, so it just keeps coming back and bigger and better. And for bumblebees, they love it. They like tube flowers like this, so they can get right in there with their tongues and, and just take some of the nectar that's there. So growing something like this Digitalis Pink Panther is a big plus and it looks pretty beautiful as well. Now, the next variety of plant, the name is a bit of a giveaway, if you can't remember. He bees, bees, he bees. And they're lovely. I've got to say, there's some late summer flowers, there's not many that do so much. You get a lot of bang for your buck with hebees. Uh, they go into quite sizable bushes. There are many different varieties. Uh, uh, this is a dender. I know this grower. I've visited their site before. It's beautiful. You get these masses of flowers, very robust foliage. And with hebees, they'll flower right the way into the first frost. So there's lots of different varieties of hebees. Go into the garden center and choose. Here's another one of my favorites. This is a variegated one. Hebe franciscana, they used to call it. I know it as elliptica variegata. Um, you get the masses of buds and flowers. These just here are the buds and then there's the flowers opening up. So you get the foliage and you get the flower too. You get a lot of bang for your buck with hebes. Lavender, Mediterranean plants, they're always a plus. Lavender and rosemary are pretty good for pollinators as well. Again, there's lots of varieties. Oh, who likes a gin? If you fancy a gin, you can make a really nice lavender collins. But the bees, the bees like the flowers as well. And of course, the thing about uh, uh, lavenders and rosemary, they can go into very dry, sunny borders and tolerate a little bit of drought as well. So lavender is another big plus. A huge favorite for our bees, aren't you beautiful? is a scabious. This is butterfly blue here. Very nice fragrance. And of course it, it does attract a lot of, it's not just for bees, a lot of other beneficial pollinators will be visiting. Now this herbaceous perennial just keeps throwing up flower after flower after flower and this delicate head and this most beautiful structured flower is a perfect. Great herbaceous perennial for your border and very inexpensive as well. And once it's established, it'll just keep delivering year on and year out. Here we have a big favourite for the bees. 
these sort of little single flowers are ideal really. It's a verbena. This particular one here is called Bampton, but there are other varieties. Benariensis, which is the really tall uh, uh, um, verbena. That's a big popular one. So a verbena's very big favourite for bees in the garden. Very robust plant and, uh, and just keeps giving. Now with bees, it's key to get flowers all year round. So the later flowering varieties like this beautiful Caryopteris here, this one's called Dark Night, although the flowers seem very light. <laughs> uh, so you get this flush of almost ultraviolet flowers there uh, hanging over the foliage. It's a really good one. There's plenty more buds to come. So it flowers quite late into the summer, making sure that there's plenty uh, food available for the bee. So Caryopteris will be another good one to add into the garden. And you may, you may be noticing something here with the Caryopteris and the Verbena and the Scabious and the Lavender and the Hebes and the Digitalis, the colour. You see, bees have enhanced or advanced photoreceptors, enabling them to be able to spot blue and ultraviolet quite easily. So they have a tendency to polarise towards these purples and blues. So if you're at the garden centre and you're not sure where you should be looking, look for the colour of the flower to give you a bit of an indication of what could be good for the bees. And in many cases, a lot of the labels will clearly say that they are suitable as pollinators. In fact, the RHS have got a Plants for Pollinators logo as well. So your garden centre staff, very friendly and knowledgeable, should be able to advise you the right plants. Budlias are another favourite. Uh, they grow very tall, uh, attract the butterflies just as well. I've got a massive one behind the shed over there. It was packed with red admirals and peacocks the other day. And I cut another one back. I give another one a really hard prune. So I get a lot of earlier flowers from the one that I haven't pruned and later flowers from the one that I have. And there's so many different varieties and colours you can get. You can get a nano, which is a dwarfer budlia. But these taller ones here come in blues and in pinks like this one here and in whites as well. Echinacea, so many different colour varieties that you can have. Look at this plant. If you was a bee, you'd be heading straight for it. Uh, and with that, you've got these masses of upright flowers in the summertime, and it just gets bigger and better. Rebecca, again, lots of different varieties. It's been really good for Rebecca's this year. They've looked absolutely fantastic. So you can really landscape a whole border just using plants that are suitable for bees. And of course, the yarrow, the ornamental yarrow, as I call it, a chilia. This one's Millie Rock Rose, this particular variety. Look at the colour. That lovely sort of like... A fuchsia around the outside with a with a little yellow heart to it. How gorgeous! So lots of different varieties of chilia are good. And later on in the season, sedums which are coming in. It's not just the alpine varieties. There's the herbaceous varieties as well. Autumn and nalis give a lot of late flower, which is great for bees. And I've got to say, you don't have to spend a fortune. Certainly earlier on in the year, it's best to leave weeds. Certainly things like dandelions. Please don't pull out your early dandelions because they become a great food source for bees that are early on before a lot of these other flowers start to come into, uh, into season. So leaving dandelions or wild areas in your garden play a significant part in supporting bees as well. So there you have it. These are just some of my favourites. I've got many of these in my own garden and you can buy these from your local garden centre wherever you are and putting them in the ground will make a big difference to your bee population. So other than putting plants into the garden for your bees, you can do a couple of other things as well. Firstly, add some water. Now the easiest way to do this is I get a, a I've got a saucer here, I've got a couple of plates as well, that I just put gravel in. Then I add a little bit of rainwater in between the gravel. So the bees have got a real dry place to land, to better have a little drink. And a couple of these drinking stations around your garden, it's perfect for your bees. Habitat is another way to help bees. And creating sort of little bee houses like this here, where I've drilled out a few bamboo canes, so I've taken the pith out so little masonry bees can go in there, plus a few logs as well. But of course, leave areas of your garden to go slightly wild as well. A section that's slightly out of view. You can sow it with some wildflowers, let the dandelions grow naturally, you know, put in some twigs and some logs, let it just grow over wild a bit. It'll be perfect habitat 
for some of the bees. And of course, we've got to educate the young as well. Our children, maybe grandchildren, nieces, nephews. Let the youth understand the plight of our bees and just how the smallest things that we do in our own garden can make a dramatic difference. Please help your bees. <laughs>